Hey guys, it's Fox with Fox Games, and it's time for part four of our Becoming a PC Gamer series, where we delve into the graphic settings and I help explain some of the mystery of what all these different words mean. If you haven't seen parts one through three, definitely go back and check them out. You can click here to start the playlist. This is going to be a fun one because you get to tinker around with your game's appearance and decide how you want it to look. Please note that due to the nature of video compression and how internet video works, you really can't see the full effect in most of these changes, and this is especially true for the frame rate as YouTube videos are limited to a maximum of 30 frames per second. So you're ready to start playing a game, but you want to fine tune the experience to your particular tastes. Go ahead and launch the game and one of two things will typically happen. It will either start the game itself or it will start a game launcher which may contain the video settings in it. If you start it up and see small window on your desktop that has an option for video settings or graphics, go ahead and click that and you'll see some options there. Some games even spread their options out between the in-game graphic settings and the out-of-game graphic settings. This may seem weird at first, but it actually does make sense because some settings require that you restart the game for them to take effect, so they put those settings outside of the game. Then when you get into the game, you can change everything there without a restart being required. It makes sense, I'm just not a fan of that style. Anyway, the first thing you're likely to see at the top is the resolution. This usually comes in one of two forms, a drop down box where you select the resolution from a list or a scroll box of some kind where you have to click through one by one through each resolution option. I really hate the click through option, it's just pointless to be constantly pushing sideways and if you happen to actually miss the resolution you're looking for, you start over again, which seems kind of silly. Please note that games will not show you resolutions that you can't display, so they'll stop at the max resolution that you are capable of. In this case for me it's 1920 by 1080. I recommend you pick the native resolution for your monitor or your HDTV as this typically looks the best. Hopefully your monitor does 1080p. If you buy a monitor, make sure it does. If you have a full 1080p HDTV, then obviously select 1920 by 1080 as your resolution. The video screen may go black as it switches resolutions or you may be able to change other settings before clicking apply or OK. The other settings I'll talk about may not be in any particular order depending on the game so you may have to look around a bit. I highly recommend setting vertical sync to on, and if there is a number setting, set it to 60 frames per second or your monitor's refresh rate, which is typically going to be 60 hertz, which is 60 frames a second. That's what I always do. Vertical sync can also be listed as V-Sync, Lock Frame Rate, Frame Rate, or Sync with Monitor's Refresh Rate. No matter what it's called, it'll say something about the frame rate or syncing. This is almost always simply V-Sync. Newer games offer something called Adaptive V-Sync, which is meant to ease your frame rate dipping up and down so that it isn't as noticeable, but I really don't like it. I just stick to regular V-Sync, and that's best if you ask me. Why do you need V-Sync? Because of this, screen tearing. If your graphics card produces more frames than the monitor can show at once, they may actually get out of sync so that a partial frame is at the top while another frame is at the bottom. And this causes part of the screen to look like something pulled it apart or tore it. Note the term screen tearing. Another popular option is anti-aliasing, sometimes just listed as AA. Specialized forms of anti-aliasing include FXAA or SMAA. Anti-aliasing eliminates aliasing. Well, what is aliasing? It's this, otherwise known as the Jaggies. This is a huge problem on the Nintendo Wii. Very noticeable in an otherwise gorgeous game like Xenoblade Chronicles. What causes these Jaggies? Well, it's actually really simple. There simply aren't enough pixels available on the screen to show all the small deviations and angles and thin objects. This is true for the Wii because it can only do 480p. You will notice this on things like a character sword, the edge of a wall, or any other angled edges. Sometimes a lack of available pixel resolution can cause what appear to be gaps in items like very thin objects such as antennas in the game Call of Duty. In the console versions, these antennas often have numerous gaps appearing to float in midair or be broken apart. Thanks to higher resolutions like 1920x1080, anti-aliasing is not as important as it used to be for PC gaming. 1080p gives most games plenty of pixels to properly show edges without getting too much of that stair-stepping effect. When running in 1080p, I recommend setting AA to something like 2x. If there is an option for FXAA or SMAA, you could try turning them on and playing the game for a while. Does it look any better to you, or does it affect performance? Turn on frame rate count, or for, you know, show frame rate, whatever it's called in the game. There may not be an option for it, and if there's not, you can use a program like Fraps so you can see the frame rate in real time on your screen. This basically tells you how your computer is doing running the game. The goal is to make the game perform as smoothly as possible while also maintaining the highest level of visual quality. My goal is always aiming for a consistent 60 frames a second with as few dips below that as possible. 
Another very important option I recommend you modify right away is the shadows setting. It may be split up into multiples such as grass shadows, player shadows, object shadows, etc. Shadow effects drastically affect performance in most games and are one of the first things that I turn down or even turn off. Some games need shadows however, like Amnesia The Dark Descent which is all about light in dark areas. Other games not so much. Turn shadow quality down to drastically improve your game's performance. Besides, many high quality shadow effects can appear somewhat twitchy. Note that for most other settings, there will either be options labeled something like low, medium, high, ultra, or it may be a sliding bar that you can adjust either to the left or to the right. All the way to the left is typically off or the lowest setting, and all the way to the right is maximum. Next thing we'll talk about is the setting for textures. It may say something like texture size or texture quality, and it may have labels like, you know, low, medium, high, ultra, stuff we talked about before, or may have numbers. I always try to max this out as much as possible, but some games have massively high-res textures that can tax older graphics cards, so your mileage may vary depending on your system. Try the different settings out and just see how it works for you. A lot of this is about trial and error and seeing what you like and what impacts your performance. Some people are okay with having a much, much higher visual quality and sacrificing their frame rate a bit, while others try to maintain a better frame rate while sacrificing the visual quality. I lean more on the latter. I would rather have a more consistent frame rate than have higher quality. There may be multiple settings for something like view distance, object distance, character distance, anything that says distance in it, or view distance, something of that sort. These settings change how close something needs to be before it is rendered by the game engine. Ever walk around in a game like Oblivion on the consoles and notice like trees and grass just sort of pop up in the distance? Well, on the PC, you can set it so that those objects appear way off in the distance instead of popping up right in front of you. I like to at least set characters to show, you know, very distantly because it's useful to see enemies or other players off in the distance and then you can modify objects and grass and trees and whatnot to your liking. Now, let's put this all together, and I'll actually go into game and start setting the graphics options how I normally would. It'll include some options that we probably haven't talked about yet, but that's okay. This is going to be totally unscripted and natural, and I'll narrate it as I go. This is an example of what I actually do when I start up a new game, because I have not tinkered with the settings in this particular game yet. So you're seeing it all natural, 100% legit, straight up, first time. Alright guys, so I'm loading up Deus Ex Human Revolution. As far as I know, it's for the first time on the PC. I may have played a little bit of it before, but I don't think I modified the settings much. Now notice that this actually gives us the option to set up the game before we launch the game, which, like I said before, I recommend you do that because sometimes there are options in this area that you can't get to inside the actual game. So I'm looking at this and it looks like everything's set pretty much the way I want it to be. That's because I have an NVIDIA graphics card and they have a program that came out, I think it was earlier this year or last year, called NVIDIA GeForce Experience, which automatically sets many game settings for you to what they think would be ideal. Now, unfortunately, I do find that in certain instances it doesn't set what I consider to be uh, the best settings for my experience, but that's fine. You can use it. I use it and then I modify it from that point to what I want. So for me, it's a very important to make sure that VSync is on, and I also have 1920 by 1080 resolution. I don't know why it says my refresh rate is 59 hertz. It's not, but whatever. Uh, we'll roll with that as long as it looks good. Notice I have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 Ti. Don't worry about all that technical stuff, you know, about uh, the names of pieces of hardware. Like when you hear someone go, oh, I have an Intel Core i7 4350,459. You know, obviously I'm making those numbers up, but you'll learn it as you go. So let's let's rock and roll straight into it, guys. All right, here we go. Deus Ex Human Revolution. Let's see what settings are available inside the game. Luminosity, I imagine that's basically gamma or brightness, which in many games you'll set according to what you see on the screen. Like you're supposed to move it to the point where you can't see one of the images. I think they have the same thing in Dark Souls as well and a lot of console games. Resolution, refresh rate, still same 59 hertz, kind of strange. Aspect ratio is always 16 by 9 for 1920 by 1080 unless you want to change it. I don't recommend doing that. And yeah, it looks like most of your out-of-game settings are also available in the game. Now, Shadows is set to soft. Um, I would even consider turning those off, but I would first play the game and see if it works. So play the game first with slightly higher settings and tone them down slightly. That's what I actually recommend. I recommend you shoot high, you aim high and then bring them down little by little until you get the perfect experience that you're looking for. 
All right, so it looks like I did start the game. I got a little bit into it. I was probably just making sure it works on my, my computer because every now and then you'll hit one of those games that for some reason doesn't want to load up properly. So let's see what it looks like. And that's looking pretty good. My mouse speed is moving a little bit uh, too fast, but looks good to me. What about you guys? I'm liking it for the most part. The resolution looks great, obviously, at 1920 by 1080. Anti-aliasing, all that stuff looks great. Uh, the frame rate won't look so good for you guys, and because I'm, I have really fast twitchy movements, that 30 FPS uh, that YouTube is limited to is going to make it look worse than it does when I'm actually looking at it on my monitor. When I look at it on my monitor, it looks very clean, it looks very smooth, it looks very nice. And I'm actually <laughs> getting stuck already, like, where do I go? Where do I go? I think uh, I'm going to find it when I come around this corner, won't I? Where is it? Oh, oh, is this a door? This is a door, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and shoot some people here, because that's what you do in FPS games. You can play this game with stealth, but I don't recommend it. it well, it, it's fine. <laughs> anyway, that's it, guys. Deus Ex Human Revolution. All right, well, there you go, guys. That's how I do it. Everyone's mileage may vary, and different people have different ways of approaching these kinds of settings. In fact, some games will offer you the option of a benchmarking tool, so you can actually launch a specific benchmarking tool that tests how their specific game will work on your specific system, and then it may give you a recommended settings. In fact, many games nowadays will start you off with recommended settings after running a very short little benchmark that you might not even be able to see. You can take the recommended settings or you can modify them to your liking. I always modify them. You will slowly become more and more comfortable with these settings and what they mean, and you'll find yourself playing with them more and more. Soon, you'll go back to a console game, go into the settings, and when you see only an option for brightness, you'll feel really, really limited. If you don't know what something is or does, well, hey guys, that's what Google is for. Just type it into Google. For example, what is ambient occlusion? Google it and go find out for yourself. Learn to be self-sufficient and teach yourself through articles and video tutorials rather than being completely dependent on someone like me to answer all of your questions. Please also note that many games offer a few presets like I mentioned before. They're typically labeled something like low, medium, high, ultra, max, etc. They are likely, you know, similar to what you'd see for like difficulty settings in games. You know they go from lowest to highest in order. Try them out and see if one of those fits your taste. Just for fun, let's test out what a few games look like on very low settings compared to the very high settings. For low settings, the resolutions will be at 1280 by 720, which is the lesser HD format, which is actually the format of most console games in this current gen, as of the upload of this video. And most settings will be set to the lowest available option. For the highest setting, I'll try to max out what my car can handle while maintaining a reasonable frame rate of at least 30 frames a second or higher. It may dip below that at times. Remember, Gameplay footage is compressed on recording, then compressed on rendering, and then compressed by YouTube upon upload. Then, YouTube downgrades all videos to a maximum of 30 frames per second. Online video comparisons naturally favor lower quality gameplay footage and make them look better because they are less impacted by the compression than higher res gameplay footage. The only way to truly appreciate these comparisons is to see them in person. Now, please watch these in full 1080p if at all possible.
right guys well hopefully you can see what a difference increasing the settings can make i wish you could see these in person because it makes a world of difference and remember graphics may not be everything but they're definitely something and i will see you guys next time in part five of becoming a pc gamer where we get real with it and talk about the real reality of the fact that you're gonna have to deal with troubleshooting don't worry we'll go over how to troubleshoot some games and figure out why some games may not start may crash or may produce some other bugs or problems for you but until then remember to rate comment and subscribe Bye, John. Girl, speak! 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 Good girl. Down. Good girl. Up. Good girl. Good shot.